That's good. How do you think the girls felt 157 years ago when they were preparing to cross the plains? Uh, I think they were nervous. Yeah, and kind of scared. I didn't know what was coming. Probably nervous as heck. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I know right before this I was really nervous and then I got a blessing from my dad and that made me feel better and now I'm more confident and ready to go on this thing. What's the worst thing that could happen on this trek? Someone gets hurt. You get sick. Blisters. Hail. There you go. Or storm. Thunder. Mud. Everywhere. <laughs> Dehydrated. Probably get bit by a snake. A tick! Fall in the river. Death? You could die. I'm not coming home. I don't know, having a bad attitude, because then that will make it even harder. I guess just not feel the spirit there. That would be pretty sad. Make sure that the buckets go underneath and wings aren't loading the buses at this time. While you're out here in Wyoming, there's two things that you're going to know. The sun is hot, the air is dry, and when you go home, if you can take some of that hot air with you, we would appreciate it. Uh, your food is going to taste a little bit different out here. When you crunch down, you're going to have crunchies no matter what you're eating. That's called sand. When you go home, take some home with you. I'm very excited for this. Um, we're ready to be out there now. It's time. This is what we've been looking forward to. One small step for man. Just the famous finger. Yes! Is this the bottom of our tent? And you insert it, and you just put it all the way through. Are there thicker poles? Oh, so that's the kind of frame that we're working with. Okay, don't step on it. I feel like I can't elbow your head. We are going to see what we have to do before you take it out. Is yours already in the. Yeah. Yeah. Where's. And tie it off down there. You're going to pull that out. I just can't get on this side of the.
women behind. We'll head up there, and then I want to chat with you up there. Okay? Okay, women are going to the back. Priesthood brethren, come up here. We're today, we're going to honor not only those pioneer women, we're going to honor our women. I want you to have prayers in your hearts for these young ladies who are going to pull the weight of your burdens of this one of the hardest parts of the trail. I want you to pray for them, brethren. There are some wicked, treacherous rocks, and you can't help but have to just go right over the top of those, um, kind of like the trials in our lives. Um, we do have to pass through them, and they're painful, and they're hard. Right after the woman's poll, that was great, but my favorite part after that was when we ended up carrying Annika up the hill. And that was, I don't know, that was a really cool thing for me. Here is a descendant of Jens and Elsie. The sound of those feet running down the hill <laughs> were awesome to look up and see people not walking to help but running as fast as they could down there that was incredible and I'm sure those pioneers heard that when they felt the help of people uh, that they couldn't see. When somebody around us needs help maybe it's one of our brothers or sisters that we don't see very much in church and they're struggling in their lives we should be running down that hill to see if we can find them and help them along
reminder, it's time to put on your second coat of sunscreen. I just, I just want a picture of all the people just like frowning like they've walked 16 miles and one person like... <laughs>
So this was found in, a, in somebody's sleeping gear, <laughs> and uh, the little critter found it. So we're just reminding everybody to keep the contraband out of the sleeping gear. Oscar is a great Pyrenees. He's owned by Tina's son. He lives 23 miles from here. And he recognizes the trek season. He comes over the first week of each trek season. And we refer to him as our guardian angel dog because he seeks out individuals within each trek group that has an issue of something, either physically or mentally or emotionally. A trek group came in and the girls headed towards the bathroom and he was already here and he would not let them go in the girls bathroom he would actually growl at them he couldn't understand what the problem was so some missionaries went over removed him from the the uh, front door there opened up a door and there was a rattlesnake just inside the door so he senses issues physical emotional or situations that put people in, in uh, danger he's uh, we think about 10 years old, he's 140 pounds. He lives off the land. He catches and eats small, the young deer and the young antelope and rabbits. And he's actually, I've been told, I've not seen this myself, but he's actually taken down a full grown female antelope and he, that's, what, that's his food. Oscar, looking for snakes. Keeping us safe. Near Fort Laramie, their troubles began. Snow commenced falling. Their wagons were reduced. They knew they were in desperate circumstances as they slowly crept over the high plains of Wyoming. <coughs> Some 200 perished in that terrible, tragic march. Legion are the stories of those who were there and who suffered almost unto death and who carried of the, all of their lives the scars of that dreadful experience. It was a tragedy without parallel in the western migration of our people. When all is said and done, no one can imagine, no one can appreciate or understand how desperate were their circumstances. While we were at Martin's Cove, one of the missionaries said something about how the pioneers kept going and they didn't stop or give up. And that got me thinking that the trials and stuff that I've been going through should be bringing me closer to God, not farther away. I get run over. <laughs> Is sand harder to pull up or is it rock harder? Sand. Sand. <laughs> sand. 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 Sand like sinks your feet. In a church, I say, but the Lord is all the Lord. Look how much he's drinking. We had a great experience. Wonderful crew, wonderful kids, wonderful moms and pas. It's been a big team effort. Right? 
One time around. Left. Left elbow. Good. You guys got it. Left. Right. Yeah. Left elbow swing. Wow. We're going to do this. Left elbow on the side. Right elbow in the center. Fire again with a left elbow swing. Three down and three back. One and a half turns. To the side with the left elbow. Then okay, you go right here. To the center. Keep going. Keep on going. Give me a yeehaw. That was a great yeehaw. Anybody have a fun? Just a little bit further to go. Um, remember, we're not in a hurry to get there. Enjoy the journey. just like they did. And that's because you're made of the same stuff that those four boys were made of.
Mormon pioneers by the hundreds suffered and died from disease, exposure, or starvation. There were some who, lacking wagons and teams, literally walked the 1,300 miles across the plains and through the mountains, pushing and pulling handcarts. As the long, painful struggle approached its welcome end, a jubilant spirit filled each heart. Tired feet and weary bodies somehow found new strength. If I could take the pain away, I'd definitely do it again. When I was about 16, I had the opportunity to go on a trek just like this. We came up to Wyoming, and I remember my parents and my trek family trying to pull me to go. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go get dusty. I didn't want to go walk and get blisters. And by the end of the three days that we spent out there, something happened to me. I felt something that I hadn't felt before. And what it did is it created a desire in me to want to understand why it was that the pioneers went on the trek and why it was that they gave their lives, what they sacrificed for their families and their children. And for me, that's what changed me to want to know the gospel. It helped me prepare to serve a mission. It helped me to become a better father and a better husband.